I guess me and you can still talk pottery then, Margaret. I want to. Yes. I'm, 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 I want to make a a whole set, a uh, dining set for myself. Ooh, that would be fun. Do you want a wheel throw or do you want hand built? I want to do both, but I want to okay. hand build a little bit more because I think I want to make some casserole. Ooh, that'd be fun. Well, you can throw a bottomless, you know, the vertical like throw a bottomless pot and then when that gets leather hard take it off the wheel and put it onto a slab and you can make that shape whatever you want. Ooh. Might have to see you do this. <clears throat> but then I could throw a dinner party and be like, yes, everything you ate off of, I created it. You know, That's there. right. That's the cool <laughs> thing is it's 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 yeah, it's really, oh, we lost somebody. We lost somebody, no. Oh, I think that was just Danae. Kind of clicked off. All right, two minutes. We're going to start. Okay. We're going to punch it out with what we got. No, it wouldn't. It was, um, I think so one Jackson, of the students. Kiana. We got Jackson in here, Kiana, and Delicia. Delicia. Because Jackson was the first one to come in. Mm-hmm. You don't hear a lot of noise in the background from me, do you? You don't hear my son. I'll close my door. Nope, we got somebody else. Hello. Good morning. It is 1010. I'm going to go ahead and start. My name is Professor Alana Taylor. I teach at Alabama State University in the art department. I've also taught in the communications department. Um, it, while I'm talking about myself, if you do not have a piece of paper and a pen or pencil, please go grab it because I need y'all to take some notes and even formulate some questions. All right. And if you need me to speak up, please let me know, type me a message, etc. If you can see my screen, I am showing you a few photos from my Facebook. If you have not, is everybody in Montgomery or where do, where's everybody at? Can anybody tell me? Unmute yourself and tell me where you're from or where you're staying at right now. No, I can. Lowndes County. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I'm going to need y'all to participate with me a little bit because my class is a little bit more interactive because we're going to be pulling out information about your project because it's not mine. It's yours. Okay. Well, it Y'all are watching the news, or of course, I know y'all are on social media. I know a lot of things are popping up. We have the coronavirus going on. We have Black Lives Matter movements going on, amongst a lot of other things. But me and a group of uh, community artists through More Than Tours, The King's Canvas, and 21 Dreams, those are some community art groups here. And we planted... Black Lives Matter 
around the fountain downtown. So I wanted to show you one of the things that I've done to express or help express what's going on with me and my community. That's me with the little hat right there. So me and a group of friends were able to express ourselves visually. And that's what we're going to be working on today with you guys. If I'm clicking through the pictures too fast, let me know. That's the mayor here, Mr. Reed, me and a couple of the artists. Sit out of here. But, and then we also got to display some of our artwork. I'm actually going to show you this photo larger. This is the model for that piece of artwork that I did. I don't know if you guys listen to King South, but he came and helped out. This is Michelle Browder. She's the one that owns more than tours. This is Kevin King, who owns the King's Canvas. And I'm trying to find Kalanji. Here's Kalanji. He, he's the owner of 21 Dreams. So he, these are some community outlets that y'all are here or interested. You can connect with me and we can get connected with them as well. So let's get start. What else do I do? So I work in the community with a group of community artists, activists, and other things. Try to get my hands in whatever I can to express myself because as a creative, we have to express ourselves. It's in our DNA and everybody is a creative. I know a lot of people try to say, I'm not an artist. I can't draw, can't sketch, I can't paint. I can't do a lot of things, but all of you express yourselves, even if it's through music. When you're frustrated, you express yourself in a way, even if it's not conventional drawings, you show something, you can express it. When you're happy, you express yourself. When you're sad, you express yourself. And that's what we're going to do in this class. We're going to learn how to express ourselves and think of creative ways to do it. So you're gonna combine all the information that you learned from the awesome Mr. Bill Ford yesterday in the principles of design. So you have this one piece, if you guys are gonna focus on lines or if you're gonna focus on, um, I don't know what you guys wanna talk about, size all those different design principles and then we're gonna take expressive symbolism and put them together to create this coronavirus, this quarantine, this Black Lives Matter, whatever you guys wanna title your journal. Cause that's what it is, it's a visual journal. Your assignment is going to be to create five photos, five photos or a video that's two minutes or less, or you can create both of them, okay? So you're gonna take Bill's information, my information, create something, and then your next class is going to help you refine it and edit it, okay? Any questions for me so far? No? Okay, so we're gonna go through some of my photos that I've taken and I want you to think about the emotion behind it. So I would appreciate it if you guys respond with me so I know if you guys are understanding visually what I was displaying. If not, if you have any questions for me later and maybe you're too shy during the class, where is it? You guys can follow me on Instagram. Can you see my name? And you can direct message me and I'll help you from there. If you're just a little too shy today, or if you need some help with your project along the way, okay? Do you see that? It's Alana Infinity with the E. If you guys could screenshot that or write that down. All right, let's get to it. All right, so here's the photo that I just showed you guys with the officer. My model, Saba. This was a photo shoot that I planned. Some of y'all are going to be able to plan your photo shoots. Some of y'all are just going to take impromptu photos. And that's fine, too. So as a child, I used to play with dolls and 
action figures because I had a lot of male cousins. So I did a photo shoot to represent um, heroes and dolls. And I used to have porcelain dolls. Have any of you ever seen a porcelain doll or had one? No. Okay. Well, a porcelain doll. Yes. yes. Savvy, did you ever crack it? No. No. Well, I cracked a few because I, I guess I was a little too rough. So this is what it represents in this photo. I, I want you to look at the motion or lack of emotion in this photo. Look at her stare. Look at the contrast of the lights, the highlights, and the shaded parts. And just think about how each of these parts combined tells the story of this photo and what it means to you. Because the cool thing about being an artist is you can create something and emotionally feel something to you, but your viewer will feel something else because it sparks a memory within them or it sparks um, an idea within them. All right, so the editing process, of course, I did not, I could have did this two ways. I could have drew on her face to create these lines, which I didn't. I ended up photoshopping these lines on her and manipulating the color. I've done that. All right, so this one, showing you this one because of the lighting. If you notice, there's mostly light on one side of his body, which creates a contrast on a straight picture. I didn't take it straight on, picture's taken straight on. So it's a flat picture, but the light being on one side gives it dynamic. This is Mr. Michael, he's a great singer in Montgomery. And then here's again, same model. Instead of her being broken, she's breaking glass. That was Photoshopped as well. So we didn't break anything. So please do not break anything. I don't want y'all breaking anything. But the emotion behind this, what do you think it is? If you're breaking something, what are you most likely feeling? Anger. Yes, anger. So what are some creative ways that y'all can show anger? Are some of y'all angry right now? No, I don't think so. You're no. not angry? Okay, what are y'all no. what are y'all feeling? What are we what emotions are y'all feeling during the quarantine and the isolation? Boredom. Boredom? <laughs> and someone said happy? What was that? Tired. Tired? Okay. What are some creative ways that we can show tired? Um, I would say like have a person to just like lay down on the bed with like like with some little bit of words, like just like surrounding the person. Okay, that's really good. And every emotion that we're feeling, it just does not have to be sad. This is actually a photo I took at an event. And you can clearly see this child is happy. This was not a photo shoot. This was just an event and I just took the picture. We can go back to the simplest things. Some of y'all, are y'all going to do, are y'all doing things that you never done in a long time? Like uh, bike riding again or playing outside? Yes. Yes, what are you doing? Yes. What are you doing? Bike riding. Bike riding? <laughs> yes. I went to the store and all the bikes are sold out. <laughs> I tried to get a bike for my dad for Father's Day. And they're all sold out. So skating. I see rollerblades are, are, are back in effect now. All right. So here's another shot that I've taken with fireworks and a father. Um, this emotion right here is... Depends on how you want to take it. The baby's sleep. You guys are just talking about how tired you are, right? Maybe the baby was worn out and you want to express that or 
Maybe you're trying to show your sleep during all this excitement. Just think about everything that you're trying to do because we're storyboarding. Emotions. This is me as a evil superhero. That doesn't make any sense, does it? How can I be evil as a superhero? Catwoman does it all the time. But anyway, filters. How are you, you know, what are you going to use for color? How can color help you guys express what you're feeling? I know that um, Instagram, Snapchat, is that the two main that y'all use? Have filters to help with some of the photos that y'all are going to display? Not really. Not really? Okay. Well, Winford's going to help y'all with that one. Um, lighting again. I have a professional kind of light behind me, but this picture was taken with just that regular lamp light right there, and that's showing what type of lighting is that? Does anybody know? It's dark everywhere else, and this light is just on one place. No? Okay. Spotlighting. Spotlighting, just highlighting one area. So I'm trying to draw attention to this information that's on this table. So thinking about how can you use lighting again to express or point out or highlight the information that y'all are trying to show in your story, in your journal. Here's another photo from the Heroes and Dolls. You can clearly see that I'm trying to highlight a few things on her. And how did I do that? If you look at the jewels under her eyes, that is an implied line. Her lashes are an implied line. Her lips are highlighted with the redness. The bow is highlighted to show the lipness of her and her earrings and things because she's supposed to be limp and weak compared to this muscular hero um, compared to this doll, those were some of the symbolism and metaphors that I was using for this shoot. And again, I just wanted to highlight her eyes, her lips. And then this one is using perspective and focus. My hand is clearly pointing and presenting the butterfly but it also is directing you to the background, which the dream catcher is in the background, but it is out of focus. So you focus on one thing first, and then you go to the next. So tell me where you guys are emotionally, and you guys are trying to take your story, because this is where we're going to start brainstorming on how we're going to storyboard your story before you start shooting. Because you're not going to just go out there and just start shooting things randomly. You're trying to tell a story. You're trying to tell how you feel. You're trying to tell, if maybe it's not even your feelings. Maybe you're trying to tell your, your family story or a friend's story. Maybe you're just emotionally connected with um, the community and everything that's going on. That's why I started off the class with the Black Lives Matter mural that we have downtown because emotionally we were frustrated. Emotionally, there's so much going on. We actually encountered some racism um, while we were doing the mural downtown. Um, so tell me, I heard, you know, we talked about bored. If you guys wanna talk about boredom, what makes it bored? Is it cause you're stuck in a room? Is it because you can't go to the mall anymore? What is it? What makes it bored? Or is it the fact that you have time and you don't know how to use it? Talk to me, whoever said the boredom. These guys got me up here blinking like. Blink, 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 blink. Come on, talk to me who, with the boredom or someone else. If it's not the boredom, what is it? Because we got to work through these ideas. My class is working through the ideas. I'm here to help you figure out how are you going to tell your story. 
I don't know who said boredom, but um, I'm bored too. So it's like being stuck in the house most of the time and not being able to go anywhere. Did you do a lot of things before the coronavirus? What What were you doing that I was not of, bored? You know, not I went bored. a lot of places with my friends. Okay. So do you still talk to your friends now through Zoom like we're doing or FaceTime or anything else? Yes. Okay. So what is that? So is it just being around them that makes a difference? Or what do you, What are the things that you could feel that is different emotionally versus this virtual, what, like we're doing right now? Mm, I don't know for sure yet. I gotta think about it. Okay, that's what, that's what we're doing right now. We're thinking about what are the differences. Anybody else? Want to chime in on the differences? Come on, guys. This is for you. I am here. I say, like, you. when you be around your friends, you just feel comfortable around them. So the vibe, you feel the yeah. energy. And you can't mm -hmm. feel that through the digital stuff. No, not at all. All right. So... What visually do you think we could show that? Um, I would say like have like like have a line like down the middle, like show the difference. And on one side, it would show you would Facetime your friend, but like you would be sad. Then, like, on the other side, with you around your friends, you be happy. Oh, I love that. So we're showing that that contrast. Yeah. Okay. That's really good. So a line of division. So we're using the lines to show this. Yeah, that's really good. Anybody else? What about my bike rider? Is that a, that's a happy feeling, right? How can you show the the bike riding? What are the different ways you could take pictures of the bike? You know, you could do POV, which means point of view. So you could be on the bike and take the picture. Or you can have someone take a picture of you. Or you could put your phone on a timer to take a picture of you. Or you could do a video of you riding. Or the, I think, is it is it on Instagram, the little boomerang video, the little short video? What else is going on? Are y'all cooking more? Are y'all learning how to cook? Are y'all learning new things? Is this isolation forcing you to learn new things? Yes. Not really. Yes and not really? What are you learning new? I mean, like, I like learning how to cook some new foods that I never thought I could actually do before. So, yeah. What's one of the dishes? Um, I'll say that I never once cooked spaghetti, but... Mm -hmm. Um, then last week, I actually cooked some, and it tastes good, so, yeah. Great. You can actually show the process of you cooking. That's telling the story. Um, a lot of people are starting to learn how to bake that never baked before in my friend group. So, from scratch, not just putting, a, you know, a little box and add some eggs. So, they're learning, um, gaining a new appreciation. So, have y'all learned to gain a new appreciation for things. Knowing how much time and effort goes into things that y'all consume now because you guys are creating it. What about um, things that are cut off? Or do I have any sports people in here? How are y'all experiencing sports not being of readily available anymore. My season don't start until March, so I'm good right now. You're okay right now? What's see what what season what's March? I'm not a sports person. Track and field outside. Track and field? <laughs> I think yours will be y'all are not as close range with people either. Are you practicing now? 
Did you show practice? Could you take photos or video of you practicing now and trying to be prepared? I don't know. My body's like used to being inside the house now. <laughs> okay, so maybe you want to talk about the challenges of trying to get back to it. What about, is there any artists in here that actually do painting or photography or videos or anything? Ceramics, like Margaret and I were talking about earlier. Is there, is there processes or things that you guys have? Any poetry writers, any music writers? I draw. You draw? What type of drawings do you do? I draw like anime, anime drawings. Okay. Well, if you know how to, do you have a, do you do it on paper or you do digital? Paper. Okay. One technique that you can do since you like to draw, you can combine your photography with your anime drawings. Okay. There's a layering process. Um, Winford could show you. And Winford really, he does a, a type of anime drawing style too, I would compare it to. So if that's something you're comfortable with, you can probably show a contrast between your photography and your videos with your anime. You can even do a, um, a stop motion video. Have you ever tried to do that with your drawings? No, I just draw the picture. Okay. Well, you could do a stop motion video with your drawings. Um, you can look on YouTube to kind of get an idea and it's you just basically drawing one one slide at a time and you can add the um photography with it as well and that'll probably be really cool to see okay thank someone you. else was speaking up thank you someone else was speaking up before the person said drawing what'd you do oh i said i sketch and sometimes okay is it just a, is there a style of sketch or you just kind of like draw people, you draw animals, you draw? I'm better with people than animals. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like y'all have a lot of talent that we're going to excitedly wait to see all this stuff. So once you guys finish all your work, you're going to submit it through the email address I think they provided for you. If not, we can give it to you again. And we're going to have an online gallery to display your work. And you will be able to share it with your friends as well or family. And I want y'all to take, like I said, we're going to take the information Bill gave you and then you're going to emotionally charge it with the information I gave you and the examples. So. The creativity part now, if your topic is boredom or maybe you wanna have a different emotion for each photo, that's fine too. This is your project. They're the only um, stipulations, like I said, is five photos or two minutes or less for the videos or you can do both of them. So what are some fun ways that you can display it? Or maybe it's not fun, maybe it's sad, maybe it's angry, maybe it's confused. If you could show boredom, maybe the only thing that's keeping you alive right now um, emotionally is music. How can you show music changing your life or helping you stay alive <laughs> mentally? Or how, what learning curves, if you, spaghetti, what was the challenges of making the spaghetti or what was the challenges of shopping now because we have to wear masks all the time. How do you feel about the masks? How do you feel about um, people scared to walk by people now? I know one of the challenges for me is I don't know if you can hear it. I kind of sound like I'm draining. I have very severe sinuses and allergies. And now that I sneeze or cough, I look like a biohazard. That makes me feel some type of way, knowing that I'm not sick with COVID, but seeing people are afraid of me now. That wouldn't be afraid on a normal day basis. They would say, bless you and keep moving. But now it's scary. Um, like you said, you guys missed the 
being able to chill and I guess having kickbacks with your friends. And now think about it. If you guys have more than 10 people, it's illegal. Think about all the different things that are changing for the better as well. Since we're not consuming as much, how much, um, I don't know if y'all been seeing videos about animals coming out into the cities, um, animals being able to create more animals because now the zoos are having a baby boom because there's not people coming into the zoos as much or the turtles um, going to the beaches and reproducing more sea turtles, which were endangered. How you think, or maybe you want to tell a story about how you think things are going to change after this pandemic. Um, if it, some of y'all are, are y'all still in college, college or um, are thinking about going to college, how is that going to change when you go back to school? Danae, you have your hand up. Yeah, that, that was a while ago. <clears throat> I was just going to say when we were brainstorming about how we feel, um, I was going to say like lonely and sort of isolated. Um, and also for me, uh, I feel like time has sort of stood still. I, feel like I, I can't even figure out what day it is sometimes, you know. It's just we're so much more aware of, of time now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I was thinking, how could you like convey that maybe like a clock with no hands on it or I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling. Just some thoughts I was having oh. as you were prompting the students. No, that's great. Um, the clock one, I actually saw a clock that had all the numbers falling off of it. I had a clock that yeah. had um, that had the days on it and it had the same day. Every day was Monday. <laughs> so, <laughs> it feels like it. <laughs> I, so the clock <laughs> metaphor is really good. Um, so let's think of some other symbolisms. The clock is a really good one. Uh, the telephone, the phones for y'all is now even more important. I feel that is where you connect, especially you have iPhones, you have FaceTime, we have, you know, Androids, we're able to do the Zoom right now. Technology, things are going to shift. That's what I was trying to talk about in the future. What do you think is going to shift more? Some jobs that are were, even the, the job industry, I don't know if any of you have um, jobs right now, how you operate how things are operating, going to the restaurants. They're trying to open things back up now. I found out through the airlines, the middle seat is now not available. This whole shift is changing things. And I know things are changing in your world. And some of y'all are still trying to process things because it's still, it's still happening. I know for a fact for me, this time, this time in this isolation or this time in this quietness is new for me because I'm, I'm a very, very busy person. So when this finally slowed down for me, I didn't know how to slow down. I'm still trying to figure that out a little bit. I'm so happy to be here with y'all and talking with you because this is something I usually do every day and now I don't. So I want y'all to think about the things that you do consistently. Or maybe you're even able to see things that you're doing all the time and it's on autopilot. I realized I did some things on autopilot. Maybe you're doing it and you don't even want to do it anymore. That's something I realized too. Maybe y'all are doing stuff you don't want to do and you've been doing it because it's just been something you were doing consistently to stay busy. Maybe y'all able to find out more about yourselves during this isolation, what you love, what you like, what you don't like. Um, are you hanging with people? Were you hanging with people for the wrong reasons? Were you allowing people in your life that shouldn't be there? Um, think about all the things that you guys can sift through in different layers and levels, because there's so many different layers and levels to you. And this is a great time for self-discovery. And this art project is a great way to express yourself and maybe find a new piece of yourself or find a piece that you buried. 
because some of you guys like to suppress things. And I say guys and girls because I have a lot of, I've dealt with a lot of students and they bury things because of them trying to fit in and not expose something they think other people won't like, but you love it about yourself and your love is more important than anybody else's love. Okay, you guys, your love. You need to love yourself and love all the good parts and all the bad parts and forgive those things about yourself you don't like. And maybe this is a way for you guys to make amends with yourself through your art. So what can we show about you? Because you guys are special. I wish I could see all your faces. Y'all are hiding them. But I know they're beautiful. And, they, and I know that y'all are wonderful people and you have wonderful talents. And maybe this is a way you can express some of those talents. Maybe the ones who, the person who said they draw and they sketch or they do anime. Do a lot of people know that about you? You know, that's one thing that's awesome about art is we get to express and show people our talents and give our gifts to the world. Giving is such a great way to give and bring light to others. So what are ways that we can express how we're feeling? Even if it's sad stuff right now. Like I said, I keep going back to the sad because that's what I've been hearing a lot from my friends, my adult friends, um, the sadness that's going on. And this is probably one of the first times in a long time that I've ever felt the world as a community is feeling the same types of emotions at the same time. You know, if I know you guys have friends and you have conversations and you're like, oh, I'm feeling sad this day. And then you're the one up and able to bring your friend up. But this time I can actually say, I think everybody emotionally is here together if they're in their highs or lows at the same time. We're having happiness because we're seeing change. We're having sadness because we're seeing change. <laughs> so creatively, how can you express that? And another thing is colors. So what colors come to mind when y'all think of happy? What are some happy colors for you personally? Yellow, bright green, um, orange. You said green, yellow, orange? Yeah. Yeah, I like those colors. It's like sunshine and flowers colors. Okay, what are some colors that you think of when you're sad? Blue. Uh, blue or dark blue. Blue and dark blue, okay. Those are associated with sad. Sometimes black, it depends on what kind of black. Like, it's really dark. Okay. Good, good. What about angry? Red. Red? The red orange. Red orange. All right. What are some harder emotions that you think you might have trouble with? You might want to express color wise. Is there any emotions that you can't think of a color with right now? Frustrated. Frustrated. So. If you close your eyes and you say frustrated, is there a color that come to mind for you? I just see just black. So maybe that's that's what frustrated is for you is black. I say black, I say white and gray. I say gray because gray is always confusion for me sometimes. You know, they always say it's not, is it black or white or is it in between? So I would maybe gray and black and maybe a little anger. If you said red was anger, I'd throw some red in there. All right, what about lines? If we're using lines to show emotion, what kind of lines would you think of for happy? You can't think of lines, what about shapes? What kind of shapes do you think of happy? Um, with the circle, it's like, it could be any color. What for happy, it'll be a yellow circle. I dig that. You know why? Because if you y'all, y'all like, do y'all use a lot of emojis? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that makes me think of what the smiley face emoji right there. You just told me to circle. 
and the yellow. So, yes, you just got to use emojis. When I was thinking about happy, I was thinking about a circle or a half circle. Um, this is where the symbolism comes in. What are some symbols? When y'all think of, if I throw this up, what is this? Peace. Peace. What are some other symbols that y'all use? I don't know. No, okay. <laughs> no. That's okay. Oh, you That's why we're here. We're here for the I don't knows. This is why I told you get your pencil, get your paper, write out your questions, write out these colors, write out these symbols. Think about stuff you hey, use on daily. Huh? Hey, what's that symbol over your shoulder right there? Oh, y'all see that? What is that black fist ha hanging up? What is that? Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter, Black Power. And I think the rainbow around is like for Pride Month. Yeah. I, I put the Kente colors around it. But yeah, it does have the pride colors in it too. See, look at you pointed out something in my artwork. I didn't even think about it. I was just making it. I was emotional when I made this. And actually, I can pull up, let me pull up on my phone, the Kente colors. So I can tell you what it means. Maybe that can. All right. So yellow is preciousness, royalty, wealth, and fertility. White, purification. Red, politics and spiritual pursuits. Maroon, the color of Mother Earth associated with healing. Blue, peacefulness, harmony, love. Green, vegetation, planting, harvesting. Silver, serenity, purity, joy. Gold, royalty, wealth, high status. Black, maturity, spiritual energy. Gray, healing, cleansing, purple, for the women and women, the women and girls. So you can also look up colors and see what they mean. You can also look up symbols. We can look up some symbols that you might want to like I said, emojis, y'all always emojis are, I love emojis have y'all ever looked into Egyptian art yes and the hieroglyphs I feel like emojis are just the new age hieroglyphs to me look at all these different symbols that we have in the world I know y'all know the yin and yang one right mm -hmm. and we have lotus we have buddha we have all these different symbols that y'all can use in your artwork. And then you have the colors, there's color psychology. So it tells you what the colors mean depending on what you're using it for. And these colors don't mean the same thing for everybody personally. That's why I asked you what colors came to mind for you. Some of these colors are used this way for marketing. Y'all eat fast food, right? Of course. Oh, you yeah. I know yeah. If, if you don't eat it now, you, as a kid, you probably ate McDonald's, correct? What colors was McDonald's? It was what? Yellow. Yellow. The art, yellow arches. Subway's words are yellow. Wendy's has red. Burger King has red and yellow. What else? Crystals has Zaxby's. red. Zaxby's. They got Zaxby. white and blue. It has white. Zaxby has white and blue. That was non-traditional. But I think even Popeye's has red. A lot of these restaurants have red and yellow because it's associating with having something hot and ready and, and just comforting for you to go ahead and grab it. So... That's some color psychology stuff for y'all to look at colors and how you want to affect your viewer. Purple's usually affected with royalty. 
because that was a color that was hard to come by and create. It was expensive to make. That's why royalty was the only people that really had it and wore it um, in certain ages. So we have, you have lines to direct people. You have size to probably say which one is more predominant. You have all these different things in little pieces that you guys can put together. So right now, after this class, you are assigned to create those five photos or that two minutes or less or both of them. But I want you to put, grab all these little puzzle pieces and put them together to tell a story. If you're going, like I said, if you're gonna pull your design facts from Ford and you're gonna pull out the symbolism from me and you're gonna pull out your emotions from yourself and you're gonna pull out all these different things that you're going through or maybe things you wish you could be doing, but you can't right now. Because right now I would love to be traveling, but with all these numbers are going on, got to be safe. Or maybe you want to talk about the corona numbers, or maybe you just want to talk about in your city what's happening. You guys have so much that you can pull from. Now it's you trying to sift out how do you want to tell your story. Okay? Okay. We only have about five more minutes left. So if you have any questions right now, this is the time. Or if you even wanna talk about another subject, this is the time. And if you, I'll pull up my name again so you guys can follow me and you can give me some, if you guys got any questions, you can DM me and I'll respond if you're stuck on trying to express something. Cause sometimes we get stuck, I get stuck. I gotta call on my friends. I'm, 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 I'm angry. I'm sad. I'm happy. How do I express all of it through what? Because that's what y'all are doing right now. I hope that I have inspired you. I hope that I've got you thinking. I hope that you have a better understanding of all these symbols and symbolism that you guys uh, deal with on a daily be basis. And I really appreciate y'all coming in today. And I'm really happy to hear your responses. And I'm done unless you guys have questions for me because this is all the questions time. Anything? So is it possible that like the first photo, it can be about happiness and the second photo be about frustration and the third photo be like some like something else? Yes. Okay. Anybody. Thank you, Alana. This oh, is great. My pleasure. I love this. I love students. I, I love can you. tell. <laughs> Seriously. I, um, I think it's one of my greatest joys is, you know, connecting with y'all and sharing what I know. Because then I know that one day y'all are going to share it with someone else. So it's just a continuous cycle of growth. And I love growth. All right. Well, Margaret, you're you're the okay. host. You well, um, you well, thank you guys for joining. And um, if you miss something or if one of your friends missed something, um, we'll have an 11 o'clock class. Um, if you want to share with any of your friends who may have either come in late or had to leave, um, share with them that the 11 o'clock class will be, I think we're going to try to do the 11 and 12 together. Mm. And then um, just uh, like Alana said, start on your projects. I think we're going to try to do uh, the online gallery will be on Facebook um, okay. and possibly Instagram. We're I'm old, so it's uh, <laughs> I'm still working on the Instagram, but um, yeah, we know we can have it on Facebook. So, thank you guys for being here. Yes, guys, thank you guys. And even if you guys don't need me for any questions, still follow me. Keep in touch if you need me. Maybe you need me later. Okay. I hope you guys be safe. Find uh, great joy in everything that's going on, regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I'll see y'all later. All right.
See you later. See ya. Bye.